Do you have problems shooting your videos and photos outside because of lighting problems from the bright sun? Well, stay tuned to the end because I'm going to share 10 tips on how to shoot better video and photos in difficult outside lighting conditions. Hi, I'm Jim Costa. I'm a videography, photography, and technology guru. I created many other videos on improving your photography videography, filmmaking, video editing, audio recording, and technology skills, and I'll link to those in the description below and both during at the end of this video, so stay tuned. If you want to learn more, remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that bell to be notified when I upload new videos. I upload every week and I'll be uploading many more explanations of film, video, photo, editing, and tech topics. Stay tuned to the end to find out how to get my free DSLR and mirrorless camera cheat sheet that will have you shooting like a pro in any lighting conditions in no time. If you follow my YouTube channel, you know that I try to respond to every comment left in my videos. I recently had a great question from one of my subscribers who was having trouble shooting outside. I researched his question to find the best answer and I decided that the answers I found were important enough to warrant their own video. If you have a shooting question, leave a comment below and I'll answer it for you. Who knows? It might even end up a topic for a future video. If you ever tried to shoot a video outside, you may have run into some problems. Maybe it was too sunny, maybe the light changed from one scene to another, or maybe it was just hard to get a shot where the background and subject were exposed properly. This is because different times of day can yield different looks on screen. Plus, our sun, unlike indoor lights, is really, really bright. But don't sweat it. By planning ahead for these variables and bringing a few pieces of gear through to your shoot, you should be able to get a good-looking, well-balanced shot any time of day. Let's face it, the sun, even though it's providing plenty of free, consistent light, can be incredibly difficult to control. So how do you control it? First, plan on the time of day when you shoot. Always consider the time of day. Different times of day yield different lighting on your subject. Early morning or late afternoon are great times to plan a shoot. There are less harsh shadows and you'll have an easier time getting a good looking shot. By knowing exactly when sunrise and sunset will occur, you can get great shots during the magic hour. The golden hour is the period of daytime shortly after sunrise or before sunset during which daylight is redder and softer than when the sun is high in the sky above. This makes for wonderful shooting as the lighting is fantastic as any photographer will tell you. Shooting in the middle of the day is a little bit more challenging and will give you the most harsh shadows and highlights on your subject. Shooting in any of these times of day are doable, but being prepared with a few pieces of equipment can go a long way. My second tip is having a couple of essential pieces of gear, starting with a neutral density filter. You're going to want to get a neutral density filter at the very least. It will help you to get a well-balanced shot because it allows a photographer or videographer to control the exposure in an image very easily. The filter stops light reaching the camera sensor, therefore allowing you to leave the camera with a higher aperture for a longer amount of time. Instead of changing the aperture to reduce the amount of light on the image, add a neutral density filter to the outside of your lens and then adjust the exposure to the amount you want. It's easy and very effective, plus you can still set the aperture to a low value for sharper images or wide open for a shallow depth of field and more natural motion blur. These filters also soften highlights and darken the sky. Tip number three is to try reflectors or silks. Depending upon where you're shooting, the sun may be in front or behind of your subject. When the sun is in the front of your subject, you'll notice more harsh shadows and when the sun is behind the subject, they may appear to be underexposed. 
In both of these scenarios, reflectors and silks can help to bounce or diffuse light. If you're starting to shoot outside more, consider picking up a 5-in-1 reflector. It has five different sides that can help you when adding more light to a subject or diffusing the light on the subject or reducing it. With the 5-in-1 reflector, you get five different options. A white side, this reflects the sun and acts as a bounce card. It produces a soft, even, natural colored bounce. There's a black side. Use this to block light, flag light, or as negative fill. There's a gold side, and this reflects a warmer light. It's very reflective in general and increases the highlights and adds a warmer color to your subject. There's a silver side, and this reflects a lot of light. It's extremely reflective, it increases highlights, and offers no color change like the gold reflector does. And finally, there's no cover. Now this softens the light and acts as the diffuser. There are other light modifiers, such as bounce boards, silks, and flags that can provide you with extra light or less light as needed. Tip number four is setting up your shot. Now that you've got all the gear you need, it's time to set up your shot. The key to getting a great shot all comes down to using a neutral density filter and the reflector to shape the light in your scene. If the sun is in front of your subject, you'll want to take the cover off the reflector and diffuse the light. If the sun is behind the subject, you'll want to bounce the light and use the white side of the reflector. Now this will make everything look more flattering and now you'll be able to achieve a well-balanced, properly exposed shot. If you're shooting solo, I recommend picking up a reflector stand. This piece of gear is not only awesome for outside shoots, but it can also be helpful to have around the studio for making subtle adjustments to your lighting. If you're working with a small budget, you can also use your surroundings to your advantage. Find a nice little area of shade and use that as diffusion or plan your shoot in the early morning or just before sunset when the lighting isn't as harsh. Tip number five is to use the sun as a backlight. Normally, the rule of thumb when shooting is to place your camera between your light source and your subject. When outside, shoot with your subject facing the sun so they are well lit, but this may not be possible or practical. When you can't, you can utilize the sun to backlight your character and give them that highly sought after edge light around their head. Just wait for the sun to lower towards the horizon and then hit record. Now if this is making sense to you, but I got it in the comment section below. Tip number six is to pick the correct lens for your shooting conditions. When you're filming outside, the surrounding environment is much more wide open than when shooting inside. Be sure to take advantage of focal length. You can do this easily by using prime lenses, particularly wide angle lenses such as 21 or 28 millimeters. These are great when needing to get an establishing shot as they really can convey a sense of immense space. Then if you need to get close to an actor or subject, you can switch from a wide to a shorter focal length with say a 50 or an 85 millimeter lens and really play around with the depth of field which always makes your footage look more cinematic. By manually selecting a wide aperture and zooming in on your subject, you'll be able to blur the background and sharpen the image of your subject. This is a nice way to visually create ambiance without distracting from the subject. This is particularly important outdoors because it will help to minimize the impact of any unwanted movement in the background. By limiting visual distractions, you'll keep the focus on your subject. And tip number seven is to avoid using autofocus. Shooting outdoors often means that there will be several objects in your depth of field, such as buildings, trees, and, and, and other things. This can confuse the autofocus. If you're not careful, you'll end up with footage that keeps focusing on the trees behind your subject and blurring out the subject's face. Always try to use the manual focus when you're shooting outdoors to keep this from happening. There are some things that you can do to improve your outdoor shooting, starting with avoiding it. Seek some shade. Stand under a tree, a bridge, or the opposite side of a building where the sun can reach. If you can't avoid it, turn your subjects back to the sun, as I said earlier. It's at least a little better looking than getting them blasted in the face with sunlight and they squint. 
When shooting under a tree, however, make certain to watch for odd shadows on your subject. Light passing between the leaves can make for some odd visual effects. Tip number nine is change your camera settings. Besides avoiding autofocus, as mentioned above, try underexposing your shot since it's easier to recover detail in shadows than in highlights. You can also try using a picture profile that has a lower contrast. Tip number 10 is to use a gradient in post. Adding a slight back to white gradient when editing to bring in more details into your skies. However, this only really works with still photos or a short stationary shot, so don't rely on this one in most situations. Plus, if you're not good editing, that may not help you as much. Now you know a full 10 different tips and tricks you need to shoot awesome video and photos outside in bright sunny conditions. But what about learning more about your camera settings to get you shooting like a pro? I've created an absolutely free cheat sheet for you on all the best camera settings for your DSLR, mirrorless, and video camera that will show you the settings that will allow your photos and videos to compete with the pros so you can put the tips in this video into practice. The link to get that cheat sheet is just below in the video description. I've also created cheat sheets on other topics such as video editing and now even offer training courses on editing using Adobe Premiere Pro which is part of the Adobe Creative Suite. I'll link to those cheat sheets and training courses below as well. You want to see even more videos like this? Follow my YouTube channel Jim Costa Films for many many more. Think what you saw was great? Like it. You have an opinion? Comment below. Do you know someone who could benefit from the information I provided? Share the video. Do you want to learn even more? If so, then connect with Jim Costa Films on social media and online on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and the web. I currently have over 4,300 videos on my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films, so feel free to check out many of my other videos for great tips and suggestions. If you follow me for a while, you now know that I have a community of photographers, videographers, and filmmakers just like you on Facebook where I share pro tips and tricks. It's called Video Producers and Content Creators. We love new members who want to share their work and learn from others. You'll find the link to the group in the description below.